Hi, I'd like to invite you to a trip to New York City. Uh, these are um, pictures from 2017. from 2017 that I took while visiting New York City. This is, uh, these are sculptures that can be seen at um, Brooklyn Museum in New York. Look very much like uh, 3D printing. It's very hard to, to make a sculpture that it's uh, so detailed, but maybe it is, it's not. In uh, New York, in New York, they um, they um, museums collect artifacts from uh, buildings that um, were destroyed in the past. Uh, This looks like a Metropolitan Museum in New York now. Uh, this is a fireplace. The height of um, the dimension of the fireplace are much larger than the dimension of fireplace that we build now that are of human size. So people that use these fireplaces were much taller. This is another... Um, Another uh, element that is in um, uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art, I think it's there. Uh, actually, we can see because Google allow us to uh, to see the details of each uh, picture that uh, it's recorded with your cell phone. And uh, New York City, okay? So uh, there is a history uh, of this um, uh, of this uh, museum in uh, nineteen. 60 or around the 1960, they say Egypt uh, make a, made a present to New York a um, temple, Egyptian temple then in, from Dendera. I have many more pictures uh, from uh, from uh, this Egyptian temple that was reconstructed in New York City, and um, and uh, a, a, a new uh, part of uh, Metropolitan Museum of New York, a new building was uh, built around this uh, uh, temple this Egyptian temple. Okay, so let's see more. Uh, after 9-11, uh, close to the uh, Twin Tower, it was um, a subway station. Underneath twin, twin Tower that was destroyed at 9-11, there were seven floors of uh, tunnels underground. 
the subway station was um, reconstructed, uh, was a bid for the reconstruction of uh, this um, this subway station. The bid initially was won for $2 billion, ended up costing $5 billion. And is the subway station that um, connects the bases of uh, former Twin Tower, uh, present One World Center. It's um, built by Ca Santiago Calatrava. This is the interior. of the building uh, has uh, Santiago Calatrava um, that is an, a Spanish architect, engineer and architect. He has two universities. He participated in a bid prior to that uh, for a subway in New York City that uh, uh, bid he lost and then uh, he won the bid for uh, the subway station after 9-11 attack when the funds for reconstruction York were uh, almost unlimited. This is um, this is another building in front of uh, in front of um, one world center uh, it's a mall and office buildings and um It's called um, Brookfield, New York. So this um, building, 53 stories, that's how, uh, so this is the building. This the owner of this building participated in the bidding for um, a renting the World Trade Center in um, 2001, prior to the 9-11 attack. That building was renovated for $250 million. The owner of this building, this is the building, uh, the building in, in, in on the back. So this is New Jersey. So the view is, uh, we you see New Jersey across the Hudson River. So the owner of that building participated in, um, in a bidding for World Trade Center, but after the 9-11 attack, he also, he, his buildings were also uh, affected and um, it, there was a $250 million uh, renovation of these two buildings, three buildings he owned. So Brookfield, it's interesting fact that Brookfield, so this is the amphitheater of uh, Brookfield Palace. There is a Brookfield Palace in, in Toronto, and this is 
Brookfield Palace in New York City. So there is a rotonda and an amphitheater here are, um, you see there are real life um, oh, trees inside this uh, amphitheater. This is downtown. Um, New York City. So this is the hall that uh, that is basically a um, fountain because instead of two buildings, so this is uh, the one world center that was built, so this one that was built after 9-11 attack and because um, there were not enough money instead of the second building it's a hall and here we have a, a memorial so that means they make money showing you how people were killed in 9-11 this is the one world center The building was built with um, with uh, uh, insurance money. Larry Silverstein uh, won the bid to rent for 99 years this uh, building pra in July, June or July 2000, uh, 2001. And um, in 2006 or seven, after uh, he fought with insurance company, he received $4.5 billion. He expected seven billion dollars, and um, the deal was that uh, the building will be will be occupied by uh, government uh, that uh, government offices. So. To, to, to ensure that the rent was going to be paid. This is, we continue with the more uh, pictures from um, from um, Metropolitan Museum of New York. So old buildings were demolished in New York City and the Metropolitan Museum of New York collected the artifacts in uh, the museum, probably in private collection. And then they will, um, they will, um, um, they use tax dollars, so they they give the money to uh, they they give the artifacts to the museums, and um, uh, avoid paying taxes. So these are. Um, pictures that I took uh, while visiting um, Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, these are marble sculptures and uh, they are very intricate. Paintings of high, high quality. It's very hard to think how the sizzle went into these folders uh, in, into the marble to to sculpt 
to make this kind of sculptures. I was very impressed. So that's why I took so many pictures of uh, this uh, uh, sculpture that very, look very much like like um, 3D printing. The art of previous civilization, we don't even know. Most of the, the sculpture are, don't even have the, um, uh, the author, who the sculpture was. So it was a lot of, look at the folders of the dress. So they know in this case, cut skill early autumn 18th uh, oil on canvas. This is a, um, the sculpture, the painting. <laughs> but uh, uh, most of most uh, it's I, I took a lot of picture of this um, sculpture. It is a sculpture apparently because I took the back of the sculpture and you can see a piece of marble. So these are uh, sculpture made by Native Americans. This is very interesting. Uh, it's a dog. It's what kind of animal look like, almost like a dog. And uh, this is a marble sculpture with uh, this folding uh, uh, foldings of the clothes. They like naked woman. The paintings were amazing. So this, so in this sculpture we see angels that are humans with wings, humanoids with wings. I always ask myself, how did they figure it out? How, if they have never seen one, how large are the wings? Why this dimension and not larger or smaller? So have they seen these angels in reality? A lot of... Uh, um, these angels are made out of some sort of metal. And a lot of times you, we see this kind of angels in top of the old buildings. A lot of old buildings were demolished. And uh, they were recouped apparently and uh, kept in museums or who knows where. So look at the details of this uh, of these paintings. Okay, we don't like the fact that they kill animals, but and again, look at the sculpture. This is another almost 3D like marble sculpture the folding of the dress. Now, in this, uh, in this uh, extremely large painting, <laughs> we like, I liked also the frame. Look at the frame, looks gold plated. We don't know if it is or not, but looks very much gold plated. 
And the sculptures in these museums show very advanced skills of uh, sculptors that are prior to uh, European conquest. So we can see sculptures of Native Americans with the clothes that or lack of <laughs> that they had. Now, I like to take picture of jewelry, <laughs> as you can see, and uh, the details. So we can see th this piece of jewelry has a different type of materials, different color of me metals in different colors. Almost every piece is uh, different from the other one. We see different type of birds. You see? So Columbian Exposition and Adam's uh, vase. Let me see if I, we, okay, so. The World Columbian Ex, uh, Exposition in Chicago celebrated the 400th anniversary of Columbus arrival in the new world. The fair showcase, the nation, nation's commercial, technological, and cultural achievements alongside exhibits from around the world. Both ceramics and silver were featured prominently. The vessel displayed by the Greenwood Pottery Company reflected the prevailing passion for exotic design sources. Tiffany and Company much herded exhibit was the culmination of four years of planning and included more than 500 pieces of silver and jewelry. Although the uh, Adams vase was not displayed here, its production began during the run of the fair and the finished product um, epistomized the creativity and technical virtuosity for which Tiffany and company was just celebrated. So let's see the vase. So that's a very interesting piece of jewelry. So we can see that they have uh, half men, half fish. And it's possible to be from an old world, so just recover piece. Because again, it's very hard to, uh, to sketch and produce in such detail something that you have never seen. What if those that created this piece actually have seen half men, half fish, not only just imagined? It just, just uh, an idea. So these are pieces ex uh, found in, uh, so th they say some of these pieces were not even in the, uh, in the exhibition, but they started and worked on them for years. Something, so Colombian exhibition, Chicago. And they took all these pieces and uh, brought them to the museum. 
Metropolitan Museum of Art. A look at this. Look at the details. These are beavers. Okay. So I I love that, that museum and I think I visited few the museum few times and every time I took hundreds of uh, pictures so I might make I would make a series of um, of a video with the pictures that are worth to be shown because uh, they are beautiful and uh, we need to see what uh, past civilization have uh, produced and uh, created as uh, art. So this is Viking punch ball, Tiffany and Company, designed by Paulding Farnham. 1859, 1927, New York City uh, was getting this piece in 1893. Iron, silver, gold, um, strict ebony, purchased by the Edgar Kaufman Foundation in 1969. The Viking, Viking Punch Ball was one of the most celebrated and publicized work exhibited by Tiffany and Company at the World Columbian Exhibition, uh, conceived as a commemoration of European exploration of North America prior to Columbus' voyage. The ball design and ornament refer to Norse people and their culture according to the firm catalog for the exhibition. The handle terminates projecting through the ball rim were suggested, suggested by the bow of uh, Norseman boat. So let's, let's uh, see again. So these are pieces that you can find in the Grand Hall of Metropolitan Museum, New York, very close to the cafeteria. Magnolia Vase was centerpiece of Tiffany and Company display at 1893 World Columbian Exp Exposition in Chicago uh, display uh, Goat's Magazine described as the greatest exhibit in points of artistic beauty and intrinsic value that any individual film has ever shown. The design of the vase was a self-conscious expression of national pride. Pueblo pottery inspired the form while Toltec motif embellished the handle, the vegetation ornaments refer to various regions of United States. Uh, pine cones and needles symbolize the north and east. Magnolias, the south and west. A cacti, the southwest, representing the country as a whole, is um, ubiquitous, <laughs> fashioned from the gold mines. Uh, mind in United States. Exceptional craftsmanships and innovative uh, technique uh, manifested in the vase, particularly the naturalism of the, um, 
the Magnolias were much uh, discussed the, in the contemporary in the press. Indeed, the work was uh, heralded by the uh, editor of New York Sun as one of the most remarkable uh, specimens of silver myth art that has ever been produced anywhere. So let's see it. This is the Magnolia. The pine cones. Look at the look look at the art. What can you say? This is another civilization. This is another I was so impressed and I love the fact that they allow us to take picture. Because you go in other country, you go to the museum and okay, it's it's beautiful, but the fact that you can take picture and show it and share it to, to others, it's a it's a very uh, very good practice. Look at this art. So. I don't have uh, comments for uh, for each and every piece of art, but uh, as you can see, they are beautiful. Jewelry, 1700-1890. The early jewelry made and owned by colonial artists. Look. So this is the railway that was taken from a bank or a old house. I'm I'm not sure. I if I don't, elevator enclosure grill from Ch Chicago Stock Exchange building, demolished in 1972. So, look. And on the back, so they demolished the buildings and the, um, the demolishing companies take pieces of the buildings and sell them to private people that give them to the museum. Only 10% of what the Metropolitan Museum of Art has is exposed at any time. They have private, they, they have uh, permanent collections and they also have temporary collection where they bring exponents that are um, stored and expose them on temporary basis. Some that were acquired more fishy, I guess, um, they are under less light. I saw that kind of... Um, exponents also in uh, in the museum if you like this video i have many more pictures <laughs> thousands of pictures 
and uh, I will uh, present them to you. Okay, this was the presentation for today. Thank you for watching. I'm Liliana Ushvat. So this was 2017 visit, my 2017 visit to New York City.